Hi everybody, I don't know if you know me by now, but my name's Emily. I run the social media for Future Shop. And one thing that I wanted to do today and over the next few weeks is take you on my journey of setting up my vintage hi-fi setup for home. I've been in the industry now for over a year and a half and I have wanted to build a hi-fi setup for my bedroom at home. Because at the moment, all I have is a wireless speaker, a little one. So this big <laughs> and I wanted something myself but I can't afford any of the nice lovely stuff that we have here. I thought I would start my hi-fi journey by getting some vintage gear because I know that vintage stuff is cheaper and also I really like the vintage aesthetic to be honest <laughs> and so yeah I'll take you on my journey. So to start off with, I had a general idea of what I wanted. I knew I kind of wanted either someone was listing a turntable, some speakers and an amp all in one listing, or getting one of those stacks that they used to have where you had a turntable at the top, tuner, uh, set tape, da, 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 and then some speakers, or some kind of all in one stereo system. So I had a look on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, there's so much stuff to find for all different prices but some stuff is really cheap so i was having a look on ebay and i stumbled across this listing from the british heart foundation and it was this toshiba sm3200 a music stereo system and i just loved the look of it i was like this is great it's kind of what i wanted it's all in one the only thing was so they said that they couldn't test it but it did turn on and I was like, okay, this is a gamble. When I looked at the listing originally, it was on like 23 pounds on a bid. And I was like, maximum, I'll bid on it like 30 quid. But I'm sure someone will outbid me, so it's fine. And then I won the bid, which was unexpected, for 29 pounds. And so I was like, right, this is a risk, but at least if it doesn't work, it's just a donation to the British Heart Foundation. So two days later, it arrived at Future Shop and opened it up, we were, in awe, just absolutely loved it. As you can hear by our reactions. Oh, it wow. looks amazing. Though. It doesn't really come off. When we looked at it, the outside, there was a few scuffs, but nothing like major. It all in all looked okay, and there was no lid with it. Fine, I wasn't too fussed about that. And then we had a look at it inside, and it looked like the previous turntable belt had melted or something to the inside there was black all everywhere so that was the first job was to try and clean it after we cleaned it i tried to turn it on because the obviously the british heart foundation listing had said that they had turned it on went to go plug it in and one of the plug prongs had gone in a funky shape so i couldn't plug it in that was obviously something that must have happened in transit phil was very kind to re-plug the end of the power cable and then we plugged it in okay and turned it on. You can see the lights are on. So that was great. Once we knew it turned on and we got a new plug, we connected some speakers. We have some Q-Acoustic speakers in our office. Phil made me up some strip bare wire, speaker cable, and we connected the stereo system to the Q-Acoustics. So now we knew it turned on, we had to see if it had any sound. So we tested the tuner first. So we turned the stereo system on with the sp uh, speakers plugged in. We fiddled with the tuner and we could hear there was some sound coming out. Oh. At least when it works. Yeah, so it definitely works, it probably just needs an aerial. So Phil showed me how to make a makeshift aerial. By the way, don't try this at home. And we plugged that in. Here's a little snippet of Phil putting that together for me. There was sound coming through, it was amazing. So we knew that the radio worked, which was great. The next thing, we connected it to the NeoStream and that worked, which was fab. And then we also plugged in some Focal headphones and that worked amazing. So by this point, we have got the tuner working and the aux and the headphones outputs working, which is great. So next thing we needed to test was the cassette deck. Now, I don't actually own any cassettes and I tried to have a little look on the weekend to see if I could find any from some antique shops, but failed miserably. So Phil was kind enough to bring in his Ed Sheeran tape that we tested. It's on the outside. So we can push that in. Cool. Now, 
Should we see if we can rewind it? Yeah. I don't know if you can overwind them. I have no idea. It... <laughs> we put it in, rewinded it to the beginning, and disaster struck. Oh. Sounds like it's underwater. <laughs> 